Adam Audio's long-awaited new A-series studio monitors were announced a short while ago and we've finally got our hands on a pair to review. A big thanks to Kevin the Legend for sending us the monitors. We heard a pair at a private press event just a few months ago and we have been itching to get our hands on a pair to test out here at PDP HQ. For full disclosure, Adam have sent us this pair of A7Vs but no money has changed hands and as usual, we'll keep our review honest and unbiased. The new A7V builds on the popular foundation of two-way design found in their existing line of A-series monitors. The five-piece range consisting of the new A4V and A44H, a reinvented A77H and the new A8H model. The A7Vs we're focusing on today have a very similar design to the popular original A7, with a new 7-inch multi-layer mineral woofer and a rotatable X-Art tweeter handmade in their factory in Berlin. The new offerings from the A7V include DSP-based voicing, equalization and room correction through a built-in integration with Sonarworks. So once you've measured your room, you can import the profile directly to the speaker and it remembers the settings on board so you don't need to keep it permanently connected to a computer. The speaker is a little larger than the previous A7 generation, measuring 337 millimeters high by 200 wide and 280 millimeters deep and weighing in at 8.7 kilograms. They'll also go loud too, with Adam's measurements peaking at 105 decibels with sine burst measurements and a whopping 113 decibels with IEC weighted noise. That's pretty loud for such a small box. The X-Art tweeter and the 7-inch woofer crossover at 2.8 kHz and the two-way system is powered by a PWM amp on the base driver pushing out 90 watts RMS and a class AB amp pushing 15 watts RMS into the tweeter, both with 1% total harmonic distortion. However, if you need to push the amps harder to peak levels, they'll increase to 110 and 20 watts respectively, albeit with a THD increase from 1% up to 10%. Audio connections to the speaker are made via either balanced XLR or unbalanced RCA and a plus and minus 12 decibel gain trim is available to boost the signal if needed. Once you're all hooked up, the A7V will deliver between 44Hz and 41kHz, which is an extremely high reach into the treble end, typical of many AMT-style tweeters. Up next, the features that separate the Adam A7V from its similarly priced competitors. Firstly, the voicings button allows the user to select between predefined sound profiles built into the onboard DSP. The UNR, or Uniform Natural Response Voicing, is a dynamic, natural sounding response curve which builds upon the historic sound of Adam's legacy products, including the A-series speakers preceding this current model. Adam claim this voicing works well in production, composition and songwriting sessions as it's an engaging and present sound, something to inspire the mind. The pure voicing is the most accurate, flat and neutral sounding option, perfect for critical listening when mixing and where detail and accuracy are paramount and an honest sound representation from the speakers is totally vital. Out of the two, I actually prefer this more flat sound. The EXT or external option allows you to use the voicing created by the A7V's integration with Sonarworks, which we'll come to shortly. As well as choosing the voicing, you can also tweak the EQ of the speaker using four dedicated EQ bands which are found above the voicing button. Bass, desk, presence and treble. Using these buttons, you can somewhat reduce imperfections in your listening environment. With the new generation of monitors, Adam introduces A-Control, a piece of software offering complete control of your speaker from the computer, as long as the speakers are connected via Ethernet. The DSP-based functionality of all A-series monitors can be controlled remotely and in real time using this software, which can be downloaded for free from the My Adam section of their website. There are loads of helpful functions on the software to help you get the best use out of your speakers. Firstly, the tonality controls on the rear of the speaker can be accessed from the software, but on top of this, there's an EQ with six bands of parametric EQ and high and low filters, all with fully independent frequency, gain and Q to allow the user to achieve the best sound possible. Next, we come to the A-Series most interesting feature, Sonarworks Sound ID integration. By connecting the speaker to your computer via Ethernet, it's possible to load a sound ID correction profile directly onto the speaker's onboard DSP, removing the need for your computer to be permanently connected to each speaker. Once the measurements are loaded onto the speaker, 
choose the external sound profile on the rear of the speaker, replacing the pure or UNR options, and you'll be listening to the Sonarworks calibrated version of your monitors. Just remember to calibrate again if you move the speakers, change your listening position, or make any major changes to the room or its contents. Moving on to the sound of these monitors, what do we think? When we reviewed the Adam T8V last year, we found them to have a very detailed high end thanks to the AMT tweeter, but with a slightly boomy low end. A resonance lingering in the front baffle of the cabinet somewhat smeared the transient information at around 200Hz. On the new, higher end A7V, those overhanging transients are gone with a tighter, more controlled bass. This is, in part, due to the new baffle design and material, and it feels thick, solid, and chunky, unlike the thinner, ringier plastic of the T-Series. I felt the bass response was a little low for my personal taste, and so I used the EQ on the rear of the unit to increase the low-end output to its highest setting, and even then it was perhaps a little lacking. It's worth remembering though that this is only a 7-inch bass driver in a small cabinet and so you're bound to get higher performance on the A77H with its dual drivers or indeed on the new A8H. At low listening levels, the A7Vs suffer from a common characteristic of reflex enclosures in which the bass volume falls off at low listening levels. However, we're talking about whisper quiet volumes here. Go up a few dB to low but usefully present levels and there's still a very good spectral representation which can enable accurate working. Get them pumping at higher levels though and they genuinely do offer an impressive listening experience and everything just comes together really nicely. The detail coming from the A7V's tweeter is great. It hits the perfect zone between being super detailed and avoiding harshness. I've spent many hours with these, both listening to and working on music at both reasonable and not so reasonable levels, and I don't feel like my ears are tired at the end of a session. There's very minimal distortion in the top end, and so this contributes to the fatigue-free listening experience. The stereo imaging of the A7V is good, although I find when listening to music there's a sensation of a left speaker and a right speaker working to provide stereo audio. There's a good phantom image, but it's not quite like the speakers fully disappear to create an immersive soundscape in front of you. Having said that, they are tons of fun to listen to, and I could definitely feel myself getting in the zone with the music when working on them. So how much does a system like this cost? You can buy the A7V for around five to 600 pounds each in the UK, so that puts them at the higher end of the budget spectrum, but they are my personal favorites of all the budget two-way nearfields we've reviewed on the channel. Adam have done a great job with this speaker, and if you're looking for a great quality compact monitor, this could be the one to go for. As always, monitoring is a highly personal thing, so if you can, be sure to try it before you buy. Thanks again to Kevin the Legend for sending us the A7Vs. I'm off to go launch the speakers into space to test their performance when mixing dubstep in the asteroid belt, so like, subscribe, and ding the ding dong to help me get the Flopcat space program up and running. Although, at the moment, he's actually asleep in the A7V's box. Hmm.